we are today here to know about the truth. Now the main problem, as I told you, with the East and West is this, that in the Western mind it is the outward movement of the attention and it was necessary to move outward, to grow outward. In the same way it is necessary to grow inward. These both the things are part and parcel of one being. There's no separate thing like East and West. God made only one world. We think that there is East, West, North, South. It's not so. So when the tree has grown up too much, we must find out the roots. And some people, as I told you, in India, who were bothered and worried, started thinking about why are we on this earth. As a result of that, they reached a point where they started seeing that there is something beyond us. As I told you yesterday, there are ten valencies within us. That means matter has eight and we have ten valencies. Now, it is not yet complete. At the ten valencies, we balance ourselves. That's why all the great prophets came on this earth, like Abraham, Moses, Nanak, Janak, to give us a balance. But then we ask, why the balance? Balance is for the ascent. With the balance, our attention gets properly distributed and in the center concentrated to ascend. So after balancing, the ascension is needed in the attention. Without that ascent, our attention is at that level where we are not yet superhuman beings, where we have to become non-being. Now the concept of non-being is absolutely Eastern concept, that you become the non-being. So now we are the being and then we become the non-being. In the state when we are the being, What happens to us that we are actually believing in the illusion that we are doing something? Because the two dimensions of left and right gives you a feeling that we are doing something because we can go to the right and we can go to the left. Like if you want to think we are in love with somebody and imaginary, you see all these things, we can build up castles, that's right. If you want to think that we have to do something so we can change matter. And how do we change matter is that if something is dead, we change the form. And we think that some dead from the dead we have done, so we have done a great job. That means we think that we are the doers. Actually, by changing the forms, we have achieved nothing. Because you cannot create anything. So one must know that the Creator is beyond us. But we also don't know the Creator. This is the dimension that is missing in us. So we live in the three dimensions, but if you have to rise to the fourth dimension, where we have to know that the doer is somebody else, the Creator is somebody else, and that His all-pervading power is flowing through you, we will not believe into anything which is the truth. Supposing I say, I'm an ardent Christian, or I say, I'm an ardent Hindu, 
or anything like that. I believe in this. It's a mental projection. So we are only mentally endowed to understand all these things, but mental projections are of no value because they are not reality. You can have any kind of a mental projection, any kind of mental projection of a thing that will make you feel that this person is the avatar of this, that person is that, I am this, I was in my last life like this, in my uh, uh, own my powers, I have these powers, I am God, anything you can think, whatever you want to think, you are free to think. All right. Now, if you start thinking like that, then nobody can stop you. But it's not the truth. You are just going from unreality to unreality. So to know the reality, one has to ascend. This ascension is only possible when you become a non-being. That is, we can say here, now as you have seen, that within us grows the two sides, one through our conditioning, the superego, and from another side is the ego, that is the power of action. When these overlap each other, at the age of actually twelve years, what we find that the calcification takes place on top of your head, and you become a person, what we call as a mature person, you are no more a child, and the fontanel bone area gets completely calcified. Now if you make a hole there, that doesn't mean your Kundalini has risen. If you <laughs> pierce through this, that doesn't mean that you have opened your fourth dimension. <coughs> this is what it is. This is the difference between reality and, uh, and your mental projection. So, in reality, <coughs> to achieve the fourth dimension, you are to be triggered to that by this Kundalini, which is placed within you in three and a half coin. It has to rise and pierce through your <coughs> three, three dimensional thing to make you into the fourth dimension which controls all these three dimensions. Now this happening has to be a living happening. It cannot be something that you can do. Like some people used to believe that if they can stand on their head for say three, four hours, then the Kundalini will rise. Kundalini doesn't act according to gravity. <coughs> it rises upward. Like the, you see, the tree grows upward. Life forces act against the gravity, can act. So in the same way, the Kundalini rises upward. It has nothing to do with gravity as such. But all these mental projections have blinded us and because of this blindness we do not see how we can become a non-being. <coughs> Many people in the West do not know even the word Kundalini. There's one Kundali for horoscope, so they think it is the horoscope I'm talking about. So this Kundalini, which is your residual power of ascent, has to rise to give you your Self-realization. That's very, very important and vital, not only to you, but to the Divine. And that's why it is anxious that you should reach that position where you become non-being. So the fourth dimension is that of, we can say, the zero, where you start going towards the Absolute Zero. Like in the physics you have got minus 273, in the same way you start going towards that. There you form a line with the Divine. There's a line establishment with the Divine, you start seeing who is the Creator, 
who is the doer, while you are the instrument, you become the non-being and he becomes the creator. This is only possible when the Kundalini pierces through your Agya, first your ego and Sipuri ego both are sucked in. You become thoughtlessly aware, as said by the Zen, then you rise here and the Brahmarandra is broken and you become one with the Divine, what we call the Rutambhara Pragya, as Patanjali has said. <coughs> but nobody has said, that it is some sort of an artificial action. Artificial means what man can do, like we say man-made, man-made clothes, see. in the same way. It is a natural process which brings forth this happening within you. <coughs> Once you understand this, then no use proclaiming anything, because what's the use of proclaiming? Supposing I proclaim I am this and this, <coughs> you are still not in that position to understand. The line is not made for you to see through who is the Creator, who is the one who has <coughs> created this universe, the one who looks after our parasympathetic nervous system, the one who does all living work. We have not seen Him, we have not felt Him, we have not known Him. So first thing that should happen to us is that we should become a non-being. <coughs> when we become a non-being, then the f greatest thing happens to us is this, that we become part and parcel of the whole. Like this finger thinks, oh, I'm great, I'm great, because she does not know she's connected with the whole body. <coughs> she does not know. But once she gets connected with the whole, then she knows. <coughs> Christine, just give me a part. Today I've had a very hectic day. <coughs> what are you bringing? No, no, not that she has got something. <coughs> it's so. Licorice, licorice. <coughs> so this <coughs> non-being state has been achieved by people <coughs> who have accepted first of all that I have to go beyond. The state in which I am is not the real state. This one has to accept first of all that <coughs> I am not in the state where I can feel the Absolute. That's why we are indiscreet. We don't know who is right, who is wrong. We do not know how to decide <coughs> what is right, what is wrong. Who is a fake guru, who is a real guru? What is the real way, what is not the real way? How are we to know? Now, for this <coughs> only way is not also through understanding of Kundalini, but any scripture, if you read, it is said that you have to get your Self-realization. <coughs> now when the Kundalini rises, she crosses over all these centers, <coughs> and these centers are the milestones of our evolution. So, in our evolution, we are up to our brain level, only up to our brain level. So we have crossed, at the most in our evolution, this center is being established, which is placed in the optic chasma, in the center, which controls the pituitary and the pineal body. <coughs> but beyond that, we have not yet crossed. We have to go beyond. <coughs> and this is exactly what I felt that unless and until go, you go beyond your being, unless and until you touch that state of non-being, you will not be able to understand what is reality. For example, the people who came today, they are living with unreal things. They have to see God. 
they, if they follow any religion, it is to seek God. If they are <coughs> thinking they belong to any caste, community, anything which professes God has to seek God. Even the people who are agnostic, those people who are atheists, have to seek the Creator. One must know that you are not the Creator. If once you know that you are not the Creator and when you start seeking that, then you are a higher category of a personality which I call a seeker, for which William Blake has said clearly, men of God, men of God will become prophets. And these prophets will have, prophets means again non-beings, <coughs> have power to make others prophets. It's already predicted, your potentiality has been predicted. But if you have no value for your being, you are wasting it for nonsensical things, then nobody can help you. Nobody can help a person who has no sense in his head, who is wasting his energy. So one thing is important, that Sahaja Yoga is only for the people who are seekers, to begin with. Those who are not, we are not bothered. We are not going to fall at their feet. We are not an organization or anything. We do not want any money. We want to help people who are seeking to ascend, that's all. There is no <coughs> need for them to come. There's nobody has asked them to come. Like other cults are anxious to keep the people, we are not. The reason is there are two forces all the time acting in the nature, which you must be knowing as centrifugal and centripetal forces. By one force you are sucked in, but by another force you are thrown out. If you are no good, you are thrown out. That's how evolution has taken place. As you know that in evolutionary processes, many animals, many vegetables, many plants have been thrown out of evolutionary process. In the same way, all such people are thrown out. So <clears throat> it makes no difference to the Divine. If there are five people, well and good. If there are thousands, well and good. But only a mother's concern is such that after all so many are created from amoeba to this level <clears throat> and there are so many seekers on this earth. They may be doing wrong things. They might be doing something that is not proper. They might be mislaid, doesn't matter, forgive them. But for them it should be available that they get their ascent. They should get their ascent, it should be available. That's the only concern I have or any other Sahaja Yogi has. He doesn't care what money you have, he doesn't care what position you have, he doesn't care for anything whatsoever. <clears throat> Only concern is that you are a seeker and you have every right to ascend and those who have ascended want to help you, just to help you to ascend so that you can help others to ascend. Because people don't understand, I don't take money, so why do I work so hard? I'm a very happily married woman, you know that. <clears throat> I have my children, my grandchildren. And even my husband, who is a very responsible man, he too feels that this is the only way we can save the world. <clears throat> There's no other way out. This is the only way we can save the world. You see, if you see how this acts, the whole atmosphere helps us. The other day somebody told me, Mother, there's drought. Just told me there is drought. I said, all right, you want train? All right, a train. Nature is looking after such a person. Whatever you have, want, it will do for you. Nature is at your command, if you want. But what happens is this, that when you want to go against the nature all the time, then nature says, all right, have your own way and then you suffer. So the first thing is, a, as you call, the surrender to one fact, not surrender to me or surrender to anyone, but surrender your ego and surrender your super ego. 
Ego means that, no, I can do it, I am the one, I will do it. You cannot. The reason is only an enlightened light can enlighten another light, that's all. The second one, second point, in this surrendering, you do not surrender your money, you do not surrender anything, none of your powers. You have seen now how Danny has become so powerful. There are people who came only for six months, they are very powerful Sahajogis, they have given realization to so many people all over the world. So it is not that we <coughs> say uh, that you must stick on here. No, not at all. If you stick on, you will rise. If you do not, we are not responsible. And this is exactly is the attitude of the Divine. On the contrary, you will be surprised, the attention of Divine recedes very fast from people who are <coughs> not able to rise. It goes up to a point, it stoops down, goes very, very low also to pick up the people, but after some time the attention disappears. Just the opposite of the cults. It has no attention on people who have no desire to ascend. So the desire to ascend is the first thing you must have and that is the power of the Kundalini. <clears throat> now some people get the experience very strong. The reason is the desire very strong. Some people, they say, Mother, I was a drug addict, I was this, I did this, I went to ten gurus, uh, all sorts of things I did, but still they get their realization very fast. Why? First of all, their desire to receive the truth is very strong. For them that is the thing. And the second thing is that that they have worked it out in previous lives very much. They are genuine, they are honest. These two things work out, the ascent and establishment of your being into non-being. <coughs> so when the ego and superego form an egg-like shell, what happens? That you develop your I-ness, the being. I'm this, I'm that, I'm an American, I'm a New Yorker, I'm this, that, all these things you develop. But when this breaks, then you discover you are not. So in Sanskrit language <coughs> there are the same words for a person who is twice born and for a bird, dvijaha, twice born. The bird is an egg first, like a human being. When he's a being, he is like an egg. <coughs> and when <coughs> the Kundalini rises and pierces through, then like the tip of the egg is broken and now the bird has come out of it and is in the complete free zone, riding on its spirit. This is the second word when the person is completely transformed, he is a different being because he is a non-being. There is a tremendous difference between a being and a non-being. And gradually you will start noticing it and you will be amazed at how it works out. <coughs> All these years, these great incarnations, prophets, saints have worked very hard to put this into our mind. But they were snatched away from reality, put into some bottles and made into some limited things <coughs> by which fanaticism has come. And fanaticism is not the way. It can never be priests. You know that people who are fanatic are so violent. First thing happens to them, they are hot-tempered, they are violent. They have no peace in their heart, they are restless people. So to achieve that spirit is the aim of every human life, is the epitome of your natural evolutionary process, no doubt about it. As I told you about the chakras, today there are three more chakras I have to talk to you about. <coughs> is the chakra here in the center of the heart. <clears throat> now this is a very important center. As I said, this is the time 
when the mother of the universe came on this earth long, long time back to fight all kinds of evil people, devils, to kill them, to save human beings who were trying to ascend. From the <coughs> green thing is we call as the Bhava Saga, is the place where you became from amoeba to the human level. That's the ocean of illusion. So she came to help you to fight the evil forces. That time human beings were better people, there were two types of people. One were evil, another was good. But today the people are good and evil mixed up. In the brain of the good people, evil has gone. It's a very complicated brain these days of human beings, not simple, as it used to be. Become so complicated now that first you have to take out the evil from the mind and then you can make the Kundalini rise. This is the problem. Problem is much more complicated today than it was before. So one has to understand that by through mental projection you cannot reach there. <clears throat> First surrendering comes here when you know it's not a mental projection. First, the Mother of the Universe did help everyone to rise. This is what you call is the Athena of the Greeks. They did not know much about her, whatever they knew they have put it down, but whatever they have written they have got it from India. This primordial Mother fought with the evil forces, killing them, destroying them and saving the saints. <coughs> These saints then had to be guided into another evolutionary process. But now also this center is very important, which is first acting through your sternum bone. When in the sternum bone there is any vibrations of fear, when it pulsates with any kind of apprehension, then the antibodies which are made in this bone first of all till the age of twelve years and which are now distributed all, your, all over the body just start acting. Now <clears throat> when you say that in the AIDS people develop a state where they have no immunity, it's very simple to understand that they have done sin against the mother. They have done sin against the mother, so as a result the center of the mother is affected. Because of that the antibodies have become weak, very weak, because she's the one who nourishes them. Because of that weakness they cannot fight the enemies, that's how they have no immunity to anything. But somehow if you can raise the Kundalini and nourish this center, you can cure that disease, it's not difficult. It's a simple thing, but first of all the one who is going to do it has to have a very powerful Muladhara Chakra and also this center, because these two centers are affected in those people. Once these two centers are cured, they can be all right. But they must also have willpower built in. Third thing is the willpower to continuously keeping this center nourished so that they become all right, say after five, six months they can be perfectly all right. These failings also can cause a reaction and there can be again uh, the same disease showing its manifestation, it could be, it's possible. So that's why once you have this center established, then you don't have any problem of AIDS. Now when you come to Sahaja Yoga, <coughs> we actually tell you everything, there is no secret in Sahaja Yoga about anything. Like the other day a lady asked me a question of vibrated water. Now for you it is a new thing, a vibrated water, but not for us, 
actually we know also that they say that in Lutz the people go and get cured and things are there. <coughs> now, the Chaitanya, the all-pervading power, which is a subtle power, can be permeating into everything, like plastic can permeate into anything. A person who is a realized soul of a high degree can be felt after thousands of years in the place where he lived. I'll give an example. I was in Kashmir and we were going <coughs> to some place. It was all wilderness, while suddenly I felt tremendous vibration in that place. So I said, driver, I said, is there a temple here? What is it? So my husband said, what makes you think there's a temple? I said, there's tremendous vibrations in this area. He said, no, there's no temple, nothing of the kind. I said, all right, let's go this way. We went round. Little bit further when we went, what we find? There are very poor people, Muslims living there. So we asked them, is there a temple? They said, no, no temple here. I said, what is it that you have got here? He said, we have got one hair of Hazrat Muhammad Sah, Hazrat Bal, one hair of Muhammad Sah. And I caught him about five, six miles away. So you can imagine how the vibrations, the Chaitanya can go into everything. Now we have, as I said that New York is the place where due to these hopeless people, our work is the least of all and it's not so good as it should have been. But in other places like Vienna, we have an agricultural expert, a scientist, a great scientist, who has tried these vibrated water on seeds, which are what you call not hybrid. Now, non-hybrid seeds have one power, power that they can be regenerated. When he gave vibrations or vibrated water to these plants, he found that non-vibrated ones came up to this and the vibrated ones came up to that. He's got the record, he's written it down and he's given it to United Nations. And then now they feel that he should look after the acid rain. He has been appointed to deal with the acid rain. At that level today our Sahaja Yoga is. There are many scientists who are working with vibrated water. But in New York, I don't know what to say about New York, it is one of the places which I don't know how it is, that we do not find so much of understanding of Sahaja Yoga not sensitivity to search. But this is happening in Austria and this fellow has published his papers, I was interviewed by the television and all that, and then they said that this is such a remarkable thing that this fellow, if he can stop the acid rain by his vibrations, will be achieving such a great thing that all the trees of Germany are falling down. I said, but Germany has to pay for its sins also. It has done so much harm to Jews, it has to pay for it, no doubt. But still, let us see now how it works out. So he's going to experiment with that also. So this is what it is, that the vibrated water is the one where the vital power is there. With that vitality, whatever your problems are, they get cured. They just get cured. If you have a mental problem, they are cured. If you have a physical problem, they are cured. If you have a spiritual problem, they are cured. If other people do not interfere and do not trouble the patient, we can cure most of the incurable diseases. But I find the worst enemies of the patients are their own relations, who just come forward with their own ideas. Now, there was a lady we had cured her of cancer. Her husband was my professor in my medical college when I did my medicine. 
And he was very fond of me and he knew I was a clever student. He believed in me. But his boss, or say, uh, the uh, hospital where he was working, the chief man, was an English man. He said, now, your wife is with cancer, you don't depend on anything, let's have her on chemotherapy. Poor lady lost all her hair, I was not there, I had gone to India. She was cured completely, she was walking all around, doing everything. They removed her hair. Completely she lost all her hair and she died before I came back. A person who was moving about was perfectly all right. Just a relation, uh, in a way, in a relative to this man is the main doctor there. He said, no, she has cancer, let's do it. Because it is difficult even for doctors, because I know I've done medicine, I know how far they are, to understand that there is something beyond. Because they also become fanatic. And for a scientist to be fanatic is not proper, is not ethical. A scientist should not be a fanatic, it can be somebody else but not a scientist, a scientist must keep his mind open. Thus, the trouble with this uh, center comes in when women develop their breast cancers, when they are insecure. Any insecurity can bring forth this problem to you. This center is very important because it has two other sides also, the left and the right. So if there's something wrong with your mother, if the mother is not all right, if she has not given you love or if she has spoiled you or something wrong with your mother, if you had very bad motherhood or you never had motherhood, the left heart is affected and such a person doesn't trust anyone. If you have a very good trusting mother, you know whom to trust. You develop that wisdom within you, whom to trust. But if you had a mother who has not given you that wisdom, then you always trust the wrong person till you are absolutely beaten up. Now on the right hand side is the father's, which is Sri Rama's place. We can say that Sri Rama occupies that place. The father is also a very important thing because if your father has died early, if your relationship of fatherhood is not all right, if you are not a good father yourself, you develop the trouble of the lungs like asthma. It may go up to the cancer of lungs. A person who has had bad relationship with the father, who has not forgiven his father, whose father has been unkind to him, or he has been a bad father himself, can develop this kind of a trouble, especially the people who have never known their father. I mean, any lacking in the fatherhood principle gives you this asthma and that's how people become asthmatic. Now, the, th the higher center than that is this Vishuddhi Chakra, which I say in the universe or on this earth, it is America. It has got left and the right side. Now, New York on the right side. And the left is, I should say, is the South America. <clears throat> now, the right side is the one where person becomes extremely arrogant, aggressive, talks bad language, tries to oppress others. As you see every day these people are doing here, they have a right issue. They get <coughs> all kinds of problems and when I suck them in, their problems, I also get coughing myself. <laughs> when I try to neutralize them, I have to cough it out. So this right Vishuddhi is very important and the left Vishuddhi is the one by which you develop a lethargic heart, where you develop angina. Both the Vishuddhis can give you also what you call spondylitis. But the center of this, the center of this is the one ruled by Sri Krishna Himself. Sri Krishna Himself rules this. That's why in America you have this movement of Sri Krishna's consciousness. Of course, it is illusory, no doubt, but you have that. You can form anything. But why this has come so much here? Because this is the land of Sri Krishna. Now, the main thing is the people from India who have come here are also mostly Krishna worshippers. 
like Gujaratis, are the ones where Krishna ruled himself. So this is the land of Sri Krishna, is the most important because it is the Sri Krishna who becomes the primordial. Or we can see who becomes the Virat. Virat means the Great One. Allahu Akbar. When we say that Allahu Akbar, Muhammad Sahib, what he was referring to was Sri Krishna when he becomes Virat. This finger suggests this center. See how it is related. This center suggests this center. When Sri Krishna used his Sudarshan Chakra, he used this finger. This finger. Now, when Christ related to two fingers like this, it was the Vishnu and the Shri Krishna. He kept his finger down because he himself was there. All these things are so significant and related to each other, which you have to gradually learn. So this Vishuddhi Chakra in the center gives you so many problems of ear, nose, throat, of the eyes. Now, in the modern times, people don't know what they are doing with their eyes, the way they are moving their eyes morning till evening. God knows what's going to happen to their attention. And this is worked out, it's conditioned to them. They cannot keep their eyes steady. They have to move their eyes all the time like this, they have no concentration there. That's also a part of Sri Krishna's power. So all the face, ears, nose, throat, teeth, tongue, all these things are concerned with the sixteen petals of this center. So all the diseases of these come from the defect in the center. But only defect in the center is not responsible. There can be some combinations, and when the combinations worked out, we call it a granthi, a knot. And when the knot comes in, then first problem is how to remove the knot. Once you have removed the knot, then only you can attend to individual centers. But if it is in a knot, you cannot attend. So, in these complicated brains, in these complicated personalities, it is a difficult task to raise the Kundalini, but somehow it has been achieved, luckily it has been achieved. The reason for that is that the seventh chakra has been opened out. If the seventh chakra was not opened out, I would have had to clear every chakra by chakra, every granthi, and big problems would have been there. But because now the seventh chakra is opened out, your Kundalini just passes out, and then you can see in that whatever dim light you have, you see your lamp, you see your defects, you see your problems, and then you start correcting them yourself. I don't have to do anything. You become your own guru, you become your own master. You start correcting yourself. Because if you tell something, don't do this, they will do exactly the opposite. It's a common human nature. So better give them enlightenment, let them find out. Like some people yesterday were feeling very hot, I didn't do anything there. Your Kundalini itself was suggesting you are feeling hot, means you had liver problem or you are following a wrong guru or a wrong concept, something wrong in the void. So otherwise if you tell them this is the wrong concept you are following, they'll never ask, they'll believe. If you say your wrong guru is following, they will not believe. But when they find their stomach is gurgling, the Kundalini is going round and round, you can actually see with your naked eye, with your naked eye, the pulsation of the Kundalini in such people where there is an obstruction. And you can see also in the stomach sometimes the Kundalini gurgling, it cannot come up. Why? Because you have been to a wrong guru, you are living with a wrong conception, it's a wrong idea you have, it's all a mental projection, and in reality it is all false. Like in uh, India, many people have a habit of fasting. I say, this is another nonsense. They go on fasting, so they starve. What is the need to fast so much when we have so much starvation in our country already? <laughs> if by starvation, if you are good to God, then all the Indians must go to God immediately, all the poor people. 
And because they fast themselves, God is so angry with them that He makes them starve. All right, have it. You want it? Have it. Now fasting permanently <laughs> till you die. That's the logic. People ask me, Mother, why is it your is a yoga bhumi and why people uh, dry so much? Because they're stupid. This is a conditioning the Brahmins, so called, the priest class in India has taught them that you must fast. You fast and give all money to them, give all food to them, and you fast. Brahmins eat such a lot sometimes that you are amazed. They can eat by kilos. <laughs> yes. While the other people, poor things, have to fast, preserve their money, and give it to these Brahmins who are not Brahmins at all. They are it's a misnomer. They are not the ones who know the Brahma. So these horrible Brahmins who live there as priests' class try to tell people you must fast on this and fast on that. And the speciality of the fasting is this, that they tell them the day Krishna is born you fast. Imagine, a child is born in the family in India, they celebrate. They spend such a lot of money that day when the child is born and they distribute sweets and do all kinds of things out of their jubilation, because to us child, children are very great. And also that's one of the reasons why we get more children, because we love our children, we look after them, we train them well, we really care for them. So children are not born in the countries where the children are neglected, tortured. Like in England they say every, every week two children are killed by parents. I mean, which sane child would like to be born to parents like that? It's better to be poor than to be born to somebody who will just kill you off. So this is also another reason that the people in a naive country in the sense way that they are uh, like uh, Americans who do not know about Kundalini will not understand reality and in India where they know reality that they have to seek the uh, divine, they have to seek their self, may be entrapped by people who will say, all right, you fast, for that you must fast. And there are people who fast actually practically every day in India. There are people like that. They become just bones, they develop uh, TB and all kinds of troubles, but they fast and they bathe at least three times or four times. Imagine, in this country even if you bathe once, it's enough. That's why when Indians come to foreign countries they develop a lung cancer, because they bathe still the same way as they bathe in India. These are the two things which are killing the people who are seekers who want to be divine in India what we call the andhavishwas, the blind faith, while here it is complete uh, ignorance. They have no idea how to achieve reality. They read books after books after books, they know all the books, they have read everything and reach nowhere. Even the first stanza of Vedas, Veda, Veda means whatever is known on your nerves. Veda means whatever is known on your nerves. Even the first stanza says, that by reading the Vedas, if you are not Vida, means if you have not felt it on your central nervous system, then it is all useless. But nobody reads that. Nanaka has said, Kahe na nakabin apa chine mitena brahma ki kai. Unless and until you are realized yourself, your illusion will not go away. I mean, A to Z, all of them have said so but they will be six, for example, will be reading it morning till evening, this verse, you must know yourself, you know yourself and you know yourself by reading that. Like supposing I have a headache and I say, all right, go and take a medicine. I write the name of the medicine, you say, all right, take this medicine, take this medicine, you read the prescription, will your headache go away or will it increase? In the same way when you go on reading, 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 saying mantras, 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 you go mad. You have to get this grace by which you ascend, ascend to be a non-being. It's another state into which you jump just like an egg becomes a bird. It's a complete transformation, it's a complete transformation. And at this state, when you arrive, you become the witness, you become the witness. Now they talk of Jehovah Witness. Do they know that Sri Krishna is the Virat, is the Jehovah? 
Of course, Jehovah is their own saying, it's not Jehovah, it's another word, which means the one who is. The one who is, is the Virat, is the being, you may call him by any name, you may call him Sri Krishna, you can call him Virat, you can call him Jehovah, anyone, but is the one who is the Great One. So that is what is when you become the witness. The whole thing becomes a play, Leela. When it becomes the play, then you are the witness. That is Krishna Consciousness. Not that you stand in uh, Oxford Circus with the dhotis falling out and dancing madly with all these things attached on the head and they are also falling out, that's not the way. That's not the way, and begging for money. Imagine Krishna's disciples begging money. Krishna is Dhanvantari as well as his Kubera, is the one who's the god of wealth. And imagine the disciples of Sri Krishna begging. So they are just the opposite, juxtaposition. Now you go to the second center. This center is the center of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the center. Now this is a very, very difficult center because it is crossed, crossed by ego and superego, and there's a very little space to cross through. Now his mother was the power behind him, she was Mahalakshmi. But he didn't talk about her because, you see, mother is such a great blessing for the child, and he was the son of his child. So this he could not bear anything against the mother, he said it, anything against me is all right, but anything against the Holy Ghost will be taken note of. That means the mother of Christ was Mahalakshmi and he didn't want to talk about her because if anybody would have touched, the Romans would have touched, he would have come out with his eleven powers of destruction and he would have finished the whole joke. And today we would not have been here. So what he has done is to ascend this center. He was crucified. But crucifixion, crucifixion is not the message of Christianity, not at all. His resurrection is the message. Now many people believe he was not resurrected. Now mentally you cannot understand Christ. The theologians cannot understand Christ at all. It is a mental projection. Whether he was resurrected or not, for that you first at least become the Spirit. For example, if you have to see in the histology some cells, you have to use a microscope, you cannot see with the naked eyes. Supposing I say there are thousand and one cells on my skin, how are you going to believe it? Unless and until you see under the microscope. So you must have the microscope to see. In the same way, to understand Christ, you have to be the Spirit. That's why he all the time said, you become the Spirit. He told Nicodemus, you have to be born again. So he said, how? Am I to enter into the womb of my mother? So he said, no, you have to be born again through the grace of Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Kundalini, your mother, who gives you Realization. But some people can certify themselves, we are born again, we are twice born, we are realized soon, so what? You may <laughs> certify yourself as anything. Supposing I certify myself as the governor of New York, do I become? <laughs> Any certificate must have some powers behind it. For example, the policeman was needed here, to assert his powers on these people. And they are, they are the ones who are effective. So the one who has the power over a particular area is the one who is the one uh, we can call as the owner of that or we can say the one who is the king of that place. But just by saying, I am this, I am that, do you become? These kind of foolish ideas if we have, of certifying ourselves, you will miss the point. You will be the loser, nobody else, it's going to be you who is going to be the loser. Take it from me. You see, like somebody who is a great Sahaja Yogi and is a very well-placed man in life, I told him not to talk in a way 
uh, that will be telling, uh, that will be disturbing people. He said, no, no, mother, I'll be very careful. So he came up on the stage, he's an ardent Hindu. He says, now, I used to believe in Rama, I used to believe in Krishna, but now I really believe in them. First I used to just believe, because my mother told me that Rama, Krishna was like this, my father told me, I listened to it all the time, it was put into my head, so I believed them. But now after Realization, I believe in my mother, that is Mataji Nirmala Devi, because she has given me the Realization. These people have not given me Realization, but I believe in them because she says they are there. That's being sensible. They are no more. When they lived, they all killed them, gave them poison, they beat them, they never listened to them, like some are doing now to me, <laughs> same style. They always, they have tortured saints for nothing at all. But when they died, then make big organizations, temples to make money. Every religious head has got such enormous money that I'm really shocked how people don't see that. Even you'll be surprised, Dalai Lama's thing I saw in China, I would not say it was for uh, any kind of advertising, because I am a VIP's wife and we went there, they showed me around, because I know Pali language. They all belong to these generations of these Dalai Lamas and a huge collection of gold, silver, precious stones, you cannot imagine. And from where did they get it from, these poor Tibetans? Poor things didn't have sufficient clothes to cover themselves. There's no propagation of any advertising against them as such was done by China, but they just showed me as a museum piece. And I was shocked, my mind went into this. What are these Lamas doing? And I had read that Hitler was, had a guru who was a Lama. These are religious heads who have so much accumulation of money. Why don't we open our eyes to this? They have lots of money, they indulge in money, they have business, they do a... You cannot do all these things. See the great saints, Christ, did He do any business? Moses, did he do any business? Abraham, did he do any business? You have known all these people, may not have known Ramakrishna and all that, but uh, these you have known, Zen, or say any one of them, did they do any business out of their learnings or out of their teachings or out of their grace, did they? But we are stupid people that we think that those who have lots of money, Rolls Royces, must be great. That's what Christ has said, that the rich cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Same way I would say the poor, because rich and poor both believe in money, <laughs> not in God. The rich thi poor think if they get money they'll be all right, the rich think if they have the money they'll be all right. Capitalist and the communist. <laughs> but we are the real capitalists, as you said, I told you yesterday, and we are the great communists also because we cannot live without distributing. So now one has to understand that this center of Christ has been the only door to ascend to the seventh center, which is Sastrana. All this was prepared, the tree of life as they call it, the tree of fire as they call it, is this tree. And Christ died because he does not die, he is not a physical being, he is Chaitanya, his own car. A special effort was taken to create Christ, to cross that, because it was such a small gap between the two ego and superego of human beings to exist. Only the Chaitanya itself in a form of Christ could exist. And that's why he died and was resurrected, is a fact which we can show you after Realization, that when the Kundalini rises and when she comes up to this point, you have to take the name of Christ. Now many Jews did not believe in Christ, but those who come to Sahaja Yoga do believe very much in Christ, because their Kundalini has to rise. Those who did not believe in Abraham and Moses, now believe in Abraham and Moses. Indians who never believed in Muhammad Sah, Hindus, worship Him as an incarnation. 
Because when you come to reality, you find the essences of all these religions which have come out of these great incarnations is one, this unity. We are stupidly fighting, that's different. But they are one, and this is not just talking. Some people talk, oh, there are people like that who talk, who talk like that, who say that, oh, all religions are one, this, that. But prove it. Now the time has come to prove that whatever has been done in the name of God by these great incarnations, by these great prophets, is a fact. It's not just believing into anything, but is to prove it. But if somebody is stupid, it's not meant for the stupid and cowardly, not meant for that. It's not meant for that. It's meant for sensible and the brave. So now about Christ center I will not tell you more because we have to go to the seventh center. This center has one great capacity that Christ said that He died for our sins, for our karmas. He has said it. Either you accept or don't accept. If you accept, then why are you going through all this kind of uh, torture to yourself through Catholicism, through other sort of thing. Why do you want to torture yourself? He's died for you, no? You cannot do better than Him, can you? So now you have to just awaken Him within yourself. When He's awakened, He sucks it. He sucks it, these two things. And that's how the door is open. But now, as it is, the other power of this one is working very fast what we call is the Kalaki, is the one who is going to destroy, is Christ Himself. Anybody might say He's Kalaki and all that is not true. Is the Christ, He's called as Mahavishnu in the, in the literature of the Devi, that He was Mahavishnu. If you want to read, you can find out who was Mahavishnu. But the priest and the missionaries who went to India with a pistol in their hands, they didn't talk of Christ that way, so nobody recognized Him. He was Mahavishnu promised long time back. Thousands of years back, my Markandeya, fourteen thousand years back, has written about him. This Mahavishnu is the one who is going to incarnate as Kalki. But it has already started working as AIDS, as cancer. By cancer, this Ekadasha is got. These are the eleven centers here, which comes from your ten, and the eleventh is that of the Krishna. So these eleven centers are called the cancer is setting. The sign is this portion comes out. In the mirror, if you see, this portion will be bulging out. If this portion is bulging out too much, then you should know your Ekadasha is catching. It should have an opening here for the Kundalini to pass up. Now, above that, above that is the seventh center, which is the most important, which is the one I've been able to open up. This seventh center is the one which has got one thousand petals around it. In the Bible it's written, in the Old Testament, I will appear before you like tongues of flames. Nobody wants to understand that. They cannot explain it. So, really you see the lotus opening like that. And the petals are like living flames, very gentle, in seven colors, and beautifully pulsating, through that the Kundalini comes out, pierces through here and gives you the cool breeze, which you have experienced. This is the seventh center. In this center, the pithas, the seeds of all the seven centers are placed. From here, if you start, is the Muladhara is here, and then you have got the Swadhisthana around it, then you have got the Nabi, then you have got the heart. Now see, the heart is here. So, heart is to be pierced. I mean, if you do not have the feeling of your ascent in your heart, if you're, you're not a clean-hearted person, if there's something malice in your mind, then it will not work out. This is the heart, it has to pierce through. And then in front you have got the Vishuddhi, is the Virata's thing, and then the Agya, so that you have got all these centers placed, all the seven centers placed in your head. So as a result of piercing of the Brahma Randra that 
top of your fontanelle bone area, you get complete integration of your mental, emotional, physical and spiritual being. And all illusions disappear. That's what happens to you. But first of all decide that whatever you have known before are illusions and you have to see on vibrations. Because this is a new awareness which you have to use. Without using the new awareness, if you use your old awareness, you will not know because you had no awareness that time of the Spirit but that you were just a mental being. Anything shown on the TV you would believe, anything shown in the advertisement you will believe, but now this is absolute knowledge. Even if there are ten children who are realized, we have so many children now born realized. Ten children are realized and you tie their eyes and you ask them about a person, what is he catching? They'll immediately say, how many centers are catching on the fingertips? That's what Muhammad Sahib has said, that at the time of resurrection your hands will speak. But Muslims don't want to talk about that. They just want to talk about the doomsday, all of them, because they can frighten people and make money. It's all money-making propositions. But hands have to speak. And when they speak, they tell you the absolute what's wrong with another person. Once that happens, then you become the non-being because the all-pervading power starts using you as the instrument. You become instrument in the hands of God's power and it's the most enjoyable thing because then you become the Spirit and the Spirit is the source of joy, of knowledge, knowledge not that is known through books but knowledge that is known through the Spirit. Your whole brain gets enlightened. People, I don't think Danny has been to any university, but the way he speaks people will think he is a scholar. And many a times newspaper people have asked me, how is it your all disciples are scholars? I said, what about Christ? What university went to? What about other saints? Which universities they went to? What about incarnations? What university they went to? There's no need to go to university. I did go to university and studied because I knew I had to face mad people. So I had to study their language, what do they talk. That's why I studied medicine, psychology, everything, to understand what these mad people are doing. You see, to understand human beings, I had to study. That's a different thing. I had to do so many horrible things which no incarnation, no prophet, no saint would have agreed to do it. But I had to do it because I'm a mother. I have to understand my children, what are they up to? And that's how I worked it out. And now we have many doctors who are Sahaja Yogis and so many governments are now recommending that Sahaja Yoga should be taken up as a, on medical grounds. But we don't want to fall into their traps. These governments means, again, there's a trap. So we don't want to do it on that level. Maybe this might give publicity, but we don't want that kind of a publicity. If people want to come us, we'll give them realization. As a byproduct, they get cured. But we do not say that we cure people so people come here for curing. They first get their realization as a byproduct, they get cured. That should be the way you should look at it. That the ultimate thing is to achieve your realization. May God bless you all. Today, because of the rain, uh, it was so blocked, we had to come through the tunnel. And I just thought of the Kundalini, the way she rises through the tunnel. No questions. No questions. We have had enough of trouble. You see, there should be no questions. If you have any questions, you write to me. That's much better and I'll answer you. That's much better. After all this lecture, how can you think of question? Most of you have become nirvichara, beyond thought. If you have not, I'm quite surprised. I've crossed all the chakras. Despite that, if you can ask question, meaning you are at what level? Mental level? There should be no questions after this. Just get your realization. You are in a mood just now to get your realization. All right. Keep the sanctity. There should be some sanctity. Now, what we have to do is very simple thing, as I told you, it's already flowing quite a lot. Take out your shoes just to take the help from the Mother. It's already flowing.
Those who do not want to do anything should go away, be civil. What's this of keeping eyes and looking at other people is not good. You are not kind to them. If they are doing something, why do you want to disturb them? I mean, I can't understand this kind of a violence people have in their heart. Why do you want to disturb others? Yesterday there were two persons sitting just watching everyone. Have you not watched enough? Why not go on the street, you'll watch more people? I mean, you must be people of some level. If you are that level, how can I give you Realization? It's surprising. People are meditating, they are praying. At that time, how can you look at their faces and make them self-conscious? If you don't want, you go away, be kind. Why are you so wild, primitive? I don't know what to say. Primitive people are much better, I should say, they are much better than many so advanced. They are not aggressive, those so-called primitive. Even a tiger won't attack you if he doesn't want to eat you. He won't bother. Animals don't do that way, they don't waste their energy. Why do you want to look at every woman, every man who is sitting here? Can't understand the stupidity. All right, now please, all of you, must respect yourself. You are people who are seeking God, you have been seeking God. You are not people who are cheap people, you must understand your own value. Any number of times I may come here, but you'll remain the same if you, if you are just the clay, what can I make out of you? I'll try and try and try. All right, so let us have both the hands like this. <coughs> now, as I told you yesterday, we use the left hand to, to express our desire to ascend, so we put left hand like this, we have to be very comfortable. Now the right hand, left hand just like this, and the right hand is to be used for touching our centers. For example, the heart, the upper part of the abdomen, all on the left side, lower part of the abdomen, then upper part of the abdomen, and then the heart again. Then here, this is the most important center in New York, I don't know why people feel guilty. Whatever I've said, forget it, don't feel guilty, please don't, forget it, I'm sorry, <laughs> just forget it. I love you and that's why I'm concerned. I love you very much, know that I love you, don't feel guilty at all. As a mother, I have to tell you, you have to come up. This is your right, this is what you are, this is your property. All right, now then you put your hand here, right? And then you have to put your hand at the back, right? Now you have to put it, then stretch your hand and put this portion, this is very important because here you see the sanstrana, put it here. And you have to press it and move your scalp, it's very simple. Now we'll do it. You have to close your eyes, please don't open your eyes. That's a simple thing to do. Just close your eyes because your attention must be inside. Don't have to do much, there's nothing that will destroy you or spoil you, in any way trouble you, you'll feel so much better. All right. Now put both the feet on the Mother Earth, straight, on the Mother Earth. Try to put them straight on the Mother Earth, away from each other because these are two, two different energies. All right. Now, the central energy is of parasympathetic and the fourth energy is that of the Kundalini which has to be awakened. Now, what you have to do is to put left hand towards me, right hand on the heart and now close your eyes, please don't open it. There's no need to wear glasses, there's no need to gla wear glasses, you take it out, it helps your eyesight. All right, now left side is down, it's too much. Wow, pray. Now, Again feeling guilty, just before closing your eyes. You promise me that you are not going to feel guilty at all, because all religions have taught you to feel guilty. Everybody said, you are guilty, you are guilty, do this, is guilty, you spoil the carpet, you are guilty, you spoil that, you are guilty. From childhood you have been feeling guilty, 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 guilty. 
no more guilt, no more guilt, no more guilt, please. Scratching my finger is burning, I tell you, believe me. All right, all right. Now, put, be pleasant to yourself. You have to sit with a very pleasant mind, we are going to enter into the Kingdom of God. How? When we have to go for a festival, how are we dressed? We are very happy in the same way. This is what we are going to achieve today, which we have been seeking. So forget the past and just put your right hand on top of your heart. Close your eyes. At this point you have to ask me a question like yesterday. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question without feeling guilty. How can I be Spirit? I say you are the Spirit. Now come along, please just say that without feeling guilty, terrible guilt still, nonsense. Too much? What to do? What did I say that you feel so guilty? Ah! We are all one, we are part and parcel of the whole. If you are guilty, how can I be happy? And if you are guilty, how can you enter into the Kingdom of God? You cannot. You are invited, like a guest. Guilty people are not invited, are they? All right. Now put, the sec put your hand on the upper part of your stomach. Here you ask a question, because this center is for the mastery of the Divine Power, or how to handle it. All the Masters have created this center, all the Masters. So here you ask a question, Mother, am I my own Master? Ask this question three times. Oh, heart. Let's bring the candle back. Hold it behind my heart. Don't open your eyes, just ask the question three times. Keep your neck straight, don't move it up and down, just try to keep your neck straight, that's all. Give about that. Yeah, between the left navi and the heart. No, left heart and the left vishuddhi. Left heart and left vishuddhi is the granthi. Now, put this right hand on the lower part of the abdomen. Here now, they have to say something which I have to request you, because I cannot cross your freedom. So you have to ask for your Realization. I cannot force it on you. You have to say, Mother, please may I have my Realization. Six times. Or else you have to say, Mother, may I know the true knowledge. Mother, may I know the real knowledge, the pure knowledge. Or say, Mother, may I have my Realization. This is the beginning. It also helps. Ah. Hmm. Six times. Now raise your right hand, again on the upper part of the abdomen. Just put it there, okay? No. Upper part of the abdomen. Here you have to say, in the upper part of the abdomen, you have to say, with full assertion, Mother, 
on the upper part of the abdomen. Mother, I am my own master, ten times, with full assertion. Little, little lower, little lower, little lower. How hot it is, just lower. Please say that, little lower. Yes, yeah. That's how this time I stand. Mother, I am my own master. No, that is all. Ten times. As I said, these are the ten valencies built by the masters, the balance. The great master, the real master, the, the Sadgurus. Now, raise your right hand to your heart again. Here again with full confidence in yourself, you have to say, without feeling guilty at all, Mother, I am the Spirit. Mother, I am the Spirit between this and that. Vishuddhi, move it from Vishuddhi to the heart. Say it twelve times, Mother, I am the Spirit. Believe in yourself, believe, you must have faith in yourself. You have come here to be the Spirit. Yesterday I was surprised, you have very low estimation about yourself. You are seekers, you are My children. You can become like Me. Huh. Mother, I am the Spirit. Twelve times. Now raise your hand to your shoulder in the corner where the shoulder meets the neck on the left-hand side, again from the front. Hold it tight, hold it tight. Now again here the same problem as I told you, that we do not believe in ourselves, that we feel guilty. So now here you have to say, please put your right hand there and press it and say with full confidence in the Divine, Mother, I forgive myself and I am not guilty at all. Say it sixteen times. I am not guilty at all. Say it sixteen times. It's very important. I am not guilty for anything. Am Sakshat Vishnu Maya, 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 Am Now, please bring your right hand to your forehead. I press it on both the sides. Now here, you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone from your heart. As I told you yesterday, it's a myth to believe that to forgive is difficult. Yesterday, how many people came to Me on the stage, they were not feeling the cool breeze because they did not forgive, and when they forgave, they got it. So please believe in Me, please say that that, Mother, I forgive everyone, it's a myth that you are living with. So just say, Mother, I forgive everyone, please say it. Everyone should say it. Now, from your heart, how many times is not the point? Huh? From your heart, please say it. Oh. Now take the hand back on your back side of your head and hold it tight. 
Now here, just for your satisfaction's sake, you say, if the Divine, you are addressed to the Divine, if we have done anything against you by mistake or any way, please forgive us, that's all. Just for your own satisfaction. On the back of the head, on the back of the head, back side of the head. Ah. Now raise your right hand and stretch it and put it on top of the fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Press it hard, move it seven times. Here again, I cannot cross your freedom, so you have to say seven times, Mother, may I have my realization, may I have my self-realization. Now take down your hand, open your eyes. Now don't think, don't think, just don't think, you can do it, you can do it now. Now put your right hand towards me. Slowly now lift your left hand, raise it, your right hand, and see for yourself there's a cool breeze coming in. Not very high to begin with, and then you can go higher and see, if you are not feeling it. Too high, some people are feeling. Some people are very. Now, put your left hand like this and the right hand, please. It's very simple. This is what the disciple of Christ did. Heat is coming out. If you see, there's a heat coming out, doesn't matter. Put the left hand towards me and right hand like this. Some people have heat from the left and some have from the right. Hmm. Now, push back again. Right hand towards me and left hand. All right. Now, you can put your hands to the sky and push your head back and ask a question in your heart. Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Is this the all-pervading power of God, of His love? Is this the Brahma Shakti? Is this the Chaitanya? Ask three times. Those who have read Patanjali can ask, is this the Rutambara Pragya? Now take down your hands, please. See, now in your hands, are you feeling it? You are completely relaxed. Now I'll tell you how to raise your own Kundalini, that's important. You should be able to do it every night and every morning. First of all, you have to give yourself a protection seven times by moving your right hand along your aura seven times. Now see, one, very important, because your thoughts will take over. Two, some people will tell you something. 
थ्री फोर डोंट फर्गेट द एक्सपीरियंस फाइव सिक्स एंड सेवन नाउ रेजिंग ऑफ कुंडलिन इज वेरी इजी बिकॉज यू आर एम्पावर्ड नाउ इट्स वेरी इजी टू रेज योर कुंडलिन पुट योर लेफ्ट हैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर कुंडलिन एंड द राइट हैंड हैज टू मूव अपवर्ड फॉरवर्ड डाउनवर्ड बैकवर्ड दैट्स ऑल एंड द लेफ्ट हैंड हैज टू बी रेस्ड स्ट्रेट यू हैव टू वॉश द लेफ्ट हैंड नाउ स्टार्ट टेक योर हैंड अब योर हैड now and give it a big twist push back your head and give it a big twist and give it a knot again let's do it again once more now the hand rises much faster because the kundalini is there now push back your two again third time three three knots three knots to fix it up properly three knots one Two and three. Now see yourself. How much you have improved in vibrations? All right? It's there. But now going home, don't think. Because again, you become a mental being. You are a non. So live in that area where you can see your thoughts. they cannot overpower you it's coming out of your head just see is the kid or the cool till 10 o'clock we could be here i'm sorry i won't be able to meet all of you today because we have to leave the hall early but i have to again make a very very humble request now that you have got your realization some of them have not got some most of them have got it so now you must learn what it is you must go ahead with it we are having a follow on meeting for you you have to just find time to go there learn when you learn it well when you master it you'll be amazed to know that you have all the powers for example if i give you this instrument first i'll tell you get it connected to the mains then how to repair it how to work it out what are the buttons so you have to know about all the buttons that are within you how to keep it going and how to nourish you so you grow in your awareness this is a very important thing. as it is you will be seeing the miracles around tremendous miracles of the divine power which you should see and work it out it will be very peaceful so many people have become so transformed that they cannot believe it that they are, they were like this they laugh at their past it's all finished the egg is over now you are the bird so you enjoy the complete freedom of the spirit I'm sorry I won't have time to meet you today as I met you yesterday and day before though it was a very good experience meeting you all seeing you all but in any case I'm not lost there is a way you write to me you all must send me your photographs the day of your realization is very important because I will keep my attention on you you can always write to me letters but apart from that the best way to connect to me is through your assent so you establish your asset you establish yourself properly for which you don't have to pay anything nothing of the kind all knowledge will be your own without reading any book you will know it then you will know which is the good book which is not the good book which is the real which is the unreal but first establish yourself that is the most important thing i hope all of you who are today here if you try to establish it i am sure that within two months time you will be able to create a nucleus for the people who are still searching and getting drowned because of ignorance you can only so many people who are here can work it out but i hope you have that much understanding and wisdom and patience 
May God bless you. Listen first, one minute, one minute. There's a follow-up workshop meeting in the same building here on Sunday afternoon between the hours of two and five for those who want to come. Could those who feel they may come just raise your hand? Please raise your hands. I want to see how many are going to Between the hours of 2 and 5 And why not the others? On the this Sunday, this Sunday coming. Raise it higher. I can't see all of them. Very few. Raise it higher still. Sorry. Oh, I see. Then I'll come back soon. <laughs> the address... I'll definitely come back. But every time coming back for ten persons and five persons is too much. You see, Indians say, Mother, why are you wasting your energy on New York? You come to India. Within one day you give realization to six thousand. What does it matter? That's it. The address is public school 41, not here. But they said the date and the time is exactly the same. No. Public school 41 for those who people, those people who didn't come previously, is at 116 West 11th Street, just a few streets from here. In the beginning, and you must listen to surgeons. They are all trained very well. Now we have here Danny as the leader for this place because we have to have one person to be in contact because it's a worldwide uh, spread. We have to have one person. Don't dominate him. Don't trouble him. Try to learn because he has been in Sahaja Yoga for days together, he's done all the tapasya, he's worked it out. So don't try to argue with him and don't try to find faults with him, but try to see that you gain out of his knowledge and you become yourself a great guru. All right? Please. That's how Sahaja Yoga works, not by argument, by talking, but by learning and absorbing more. Those who have understood the essence of Sahaja Yoga, I'm sure they'll work it out. Thank you very much. May God bless you.